Ready to make your heart sing with the most beautiful and organized learning space? Nothing makes me happier or more productive than a well-curated, organized space for living and learning. I'm Alana, founder of Artful Teaching, Joyful Learning, and I help homeschoolers and educators teach their kids with confidence, ease, and a splash of creativity so that their kids fall in love with learning. The goal for today's blog post is to help you streamline, declutter, and organize your homeschool in order to optimize and deepen learning and play for your littles. And so you can finally stop stressing about where to put things, how to store them, and where to find them. From teacher resources to kid learning supplies and materials, school supplies and messy art supplies, toys, books, and even assessments and checklists. Now, how do we organize it all? Let's talk about teacher resources. Teacher resources include all of the printables, the reproducibles, the black line masters, flashcards, math games, sight words, basically the materials that you'll want to recreate or reproduce for your lessons. My favorite way to store these are in color-coded binders, hole punched according to subject area. So a separate binder for ELA, language arts, math, science and social studies, and anything other, which might include health, entrepreneurship, uh, growth mindset, and emotional literacy. Now, anything loose or laminated or 3D in structure, you'll want to keep these inside a dollar store locker bin. These are just a dollar fifty available again at the, your local dollar store, and they're a great place to house those things that can't really go inside a binder. Now, my program, Artful Teaching, Joyful Learning, includes joy sheets, which are the companion printables that help to extend the learning in the hands-on experiences. So we keep these separated in a dedicated binder, ready to be pulled out for each lesson. Now, also housed in a separate binder is my teacher toolkit. This is a space for all of your checklists, uh, the scope and sequence or learning continuum, your day plan, and different assessment checklists as well. You might also include reading logs, library lists, and mini observations or assessments and your notes. Next up, school supplies. So these are the fairly traditional supplies for learning. Paper, pencils, erasers, markers and crayons, scissors and glue, lined paper, and tape dispensers. We use these portable caddies for storing day-to-day -day material, and this way kids can grab them as they need. It's super portable and can be brought to the table or outside, wherever you're doing your learning. I can see at a glance which materials require replenishing or which pencils require sharpening. I call these our open source school supplies. And these should be made readily available and accessible for your kids and for lessons on the go. Now for the overflow or extra stock, I have a special space in my office where I keep any extra stock. It's all tucked and hidden away so that when we ever run out of markers or pencils, I have that on hand and ready to go. It's almost like a mini store. Next up are the art supplies. Now, if you've been part of the Artful Teaching Joyful Learning community, you'll know just how important art supplies are and how valuable it is to offer systems to display, organize, and clean up these supplies so that we foster ownership in our kids and they learn to take responsibility and show respect for these materials. Now, if your materials are thoughtfully prepared and presented in a beautiful way, your children are gonna be more inclined to want to create and to want to make their own decisions about their projects. You might decide to store them in glass jars or in a system like this, uh, Ikea Gruntal. If supplies are always hidden away and tucked into margarine containers and coffee cans, then your children aren't able to see the material, to read the media, and creativity and flow is often stifled and hampered. Also, them having to ask you constantly for permission to access these tools really hampers creativity and impedes their creative flow. Opt for these sturdy glass jars. Now, these are available from the dollar store or baskets. In our art zone, we offer watercolor paint pods, pastels, paintbrushes, a glass jar for water, plasticine, colored paper, liquid tempera and paint trays, a tray for project work, clay, and then crafty loose parts like beads and buttons and pom-poms and feathers. 
I do my very best to keep this space organized, clutter-free, and beautifully displayed. I want my children to feel inspired to create. This careful attention to detail helps invite the child into the creative process and dive deep into their many, many ways of knowing. Now for our extra supplies or the things I'm not comfortable having on display, whether that's acrylic paint or India ink or liquid watercolor, I dedicate shelf space in my office as well. Sensory materials, whether it's salt or rice or sand or beans, these deserve a special place as well. Now let's talk about loose parts storage. Loose parts are open-ended materials that can be repurposed and reimagined, reused in many, many different ways. So there are nature-based loose parts, shells, pine cones, stones, and then crafty loose parts like pom-poms and feathers and beads and buttons. Now I will admit I'm not the very best at storing these materials, but a giant cutlery tray like this one is the perfect storage solution. This way it can come out all together for our lessons and I can have a bit more control rather than a free-for-all buffet of loose parts everywhere that I'm only gonna end up cleaning up off the floor. Other loose parts that don't require a lot of monitoring can be housed in glass jars in your learning space. These might be pipe cleaners, sticks, pom-poms, and feathers. The color and texture of these loose parts brings a beautiful added element to your homeschool learning space of color and texture and allows your kids to read the media. Now let's talk about our next theme and that is storing your children's work and learning materials. Now, when I was actively homeschooling, I would store the girls uh, learning inside a single basket. We used duo tangs to keep their work separated by subject area. A duo tang is like a three pronged folder and can be expanded to fit many pages. We had a duo tang for language arts, for phonics and spelling. We had a duo tang for printing. We had a duo tang for poems, rhymes, songs, and finger plays. We had a duo tang for math and a notebook, a writer's notebook, and their idea books, which are a living, growing, organic portfolio documenting all of the wonderful learning that they've done throughout the year. Now let's talk about toys. Less is more. In fact, research shows that the less toys a child has to choose from, the longer and more sustained they'll play. Now on display, you might offer a few baskets. Your building zone might include wooden blocks, your imaginative play zone might include characters to bring those playscapes and scenes to life, whether they're people or animals or dinosaurs. You may have a basket with role play. So play food and costumes and dolls, perhaps a play kitchen or a woodworking center. And then finally, puzzles and Lego. Be sure each basket is labeled for independent cleanup. Now, if you're chasing around toddlers, I highly recommend you get a busy bucket or a busy box together. Inside your busy box, you're going to store all of the activities, the busy bag, sensory kit, stickers, water wow, essentially anything new and novel that's going to keep your toddler busy while you work one-on-one -on -one with your other children. Now let's talk about organizing our books. Now there are two areas here that we want to talk about. So Books include your read-alouds. Those are the books that are meant to be read aloud and shared with your child. And your independent or early readers. These are the books that your child is practicing their reading with. Now we are big fans of beautiful children's literature in our house. So our book collection is exploding. However, I only display about 10 to 15 books at a time, forward facing and in baskets. These get rotated out weekly while a beautifully curated bookshelf with spines out in rainbow coordinated style makes my heart sing, it's not practical for the early years. In fact, it can be incredibly overwhelming for your child and it's very hard for them to make meaningful decisions about what to read. Instead, opt for just a few between 10 and 20 books forward facing in a lovely basket. These might also include your read alouds for the week, the books that will connect your lessons and activities and your themes for learning. They are also the books that your child will explore by looking at the pictures, retelling the story in her own words, but not quite reading independently yet. Now the other basket of books will be dedicated to your child's independent early readers. These are the books at their reading level, simple pattern texts and they should be displayed separately from your more advanced read-alouds. This way, when it's independent reading time, your child knows exactly where to go, 
multiple children, either dedicate a basket for each child or offer a divider labeled with each child's names inside the basket. Now let's talk about rhythms and routines for life and learning. The final area that we're going to want to organize are our rhythms and routines for independent learning, play and self-care. These come as part of my comprehensive program and can be tailored to suit your needs. Once your child has had an opportunity to add their colorful flair, you'll want to display these routine cards in a visible location, maybe clothesline style or on a chalkboard or on the wall. Now offering the rhythms and schedule for the day allows your child to feel a sense of predictability and structure in which they thrive. No more battling over transitions or tantruming over writing time. When your child knows what to expect, they feel safe, they feel secure and ready to learn. Now, have you enjoyed this tour? If you're ready to make learning beautiful this fall with room for wonder, creativity and important academics, join the waitlist for Artful Teaching Joyful Learning. It's a comprehensive, all-in-one, kindergarten and grade one curriculum and implementation, and it's designed for families who value play and a gentle education. All of the joy sheets, the black line masters, the teacher toolkit, it's got it all and includes everything you just saw in this video. I hope to see you on the waitlist.